Barbados are hold on Wednesday the first presidential election in its history. The parliament elected the nation's head of state to put an end to 396 years of British monarchical rule. Russia hosted talks on Afghanistan on Wednesday with senior representatives of the Taliban and officials from 10 countries, including China and Pakistan. Fourteen people were killed and several injured in Damascus when two bombs attached to a bus carrying Syrian troops exploded on Wednesday. Hello, welcome to From the South, from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin in Barbados, where Houses of Parliament led on Wednesday the stepping stones to the Caribbean country becoming a republic and having its first local head of state. In a special joint session of Parliament, the House of Assembly, made up of 30 members, and the Senate, comprising 21 senators, as a collective voted on the election of Governor General Dean Sandra Mason, who will become the island's first president of November 30th. Independence Day. These steps will officially end Queen Elizabeth II's tenure as head of state, Barbados thus puts an end to a 396 years of British monarchic government in effect since the British settlers landed in the Caribbean island in 1625. Former Argentine President Mauricio Macri returned to his country but said he will not give a statement in a probe about uh, alleged spying on uh, relatives of 44 sailors who died in the sinking of our San Juan Navy submarine. The center right former head of state is being investigated for his alleged responsibility in spying on relatives of crew members who died when a submarine sank on the high seas in November 2017. The San Juan was discovered in November 2018 at a depth of 900 meters after a year of searching with the support of navies from other nations. Family members of the 44 crew members told investigators that they uh, will, uh, were followed and were trapped, filmed, and intimidated into abandoning any claims related to the incident. Macri is accused of ordering the espionage and risked uh, of getting between 3 and 10 years in jail for allegedly violating Argentina's intelligence law. Plaintiffs ask Judge Martin Bava to declare in absentia and arrest Mauricio Macri. A Colombian journalist kidnapped, raped, and tortured by rent or wind uh, paramilitaries has celebrated the decision of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, which ruled uh, that the Colombian state was responsible for the crime. Journalist uh, Jeanette Bedoya said the ruling was historic. The Inter-American Court of Human Rights uh, ruled on Monday that the acts against Bedoya could not have been carried out without uh, the consent and collaboration of the Colombian state or at least with its tolerance. The journalist was working for the El Espectador newspaper, investigating a weapons smuggling brink when she was abducted and attacked by far-right paramilitaries in the year 2000. Seeking justice, she claimed that the state, including an influential police chief, was complicit complicit in her abduction. The court, whose decisions are definite and uh, unappealable, uh, ordered Colombia to punish those responsible for the acts of violence and called uh, for other measures, including training for security forces focused on violence against women. Colombia remains uh, one of the most dangerous countries in the world for journalists. The former commander of the Colombian FARC guerrilla, Rodrigo Granda, was detained on Tuesday at the Mexico City airport. Granda traveled to Mexico invited by the Labour Party to attend an international seminar entitled The Parties and the New Society, to be held from October 21 to 23, and to which he was going as a representative of the Communist Party of Colombia. One of the topics to be discussed in the seminar will be the peace process in that nation. The former commander was among the peace negotiators in Havana during a process of which began in 2012 and ended in FARC's disarmament. Meanwhile, the Communist Party said they expected a pronouncement from the Van Duque administration on why the Red Circular against the Granda was reactivated while flying to Mexico with permission of the Special Jurisdiction of Peace in Colombia to attend an international seminar.
Health authorities in Mexico have reported on the evolution of the COVID-19 epidemic at Newton. They are in the final stage of the third wave. We have more details in the following report by our correspondent Eduardo Martinez. Mobility on the streets of Mexico City has gradually recovered and will continue to do so after authorities reported changes in the epidemiological indicator to green, which represents a significant reduction in viral transmission. I feel that some measures are in place in different establishments, but depending on the place in question, it is insanitary, many people could get sick again. The reason why I do not feel safe is that during the red indicator, there were already a lot of people on the streets. Now with the green indicator, there will be many more people and COVID will return. Despite the change, the authorities appeal to the residents of the country's capital to maintain the health measures to avoid an increase in the contagion of the coronavirus, which has resulted in 3.5 million confirmed cases and 283,000 deaths related to the disease in the country. Those responsible for managing the health emergency explain that the reduction in cases and hospitalizations suggests that the third wave of contagion is coming to an end. Let us remember that we have already had reductions of approximately this scale of 11 weeks and, as you can see, at this moment the incidence of cases is lower than the lowest level we had between the first and second wave. If this is sustained for the following weeks, we will surely be at the absolute lowest level of the epidemic. To date, the country has received 130 million doses of seven different vaccines to fight the coronavirus. 77% of adults over 18 years of age have received at least one dose. President Andrés Manuel López Obrador insisted that the World Health Organization speed up the approval of all vaccines that have been proven to be effective in fighting COVID. It cannot be that they do not approve them. It would be very unlikely because we are talking about health. We are not talking about political or ideological issues. So I hope that when the letter arrives, they will consider it and resolve the issue. Meanwhile, the goal of immunizing the entire adult population by the end of October is unchanged, and vaccination of minors between 12 and 17 years of age with chronic diseases has already started in some states. Eduardo Martínez, Telesur, Ciudad de México. We'll be right back after this very short break. Welcome back. And like we said, in Barbados, Houses of Parliament uh, led the stepping stones uh, to the Caribbean country becoming a republic and having its first uh, local head of state. On this, Telesur now talks uh, with David Danny. David, welcome to Telesur. How are you? I'm fine and I'm happy to be here with you this afternoon. Good afternoon. David, first of all, we would like to know your opinion about this unprecedented nomination and the election of the current uh, governor of Barbados as the future first president of the Caribbean country. What do you think of it? Well, we are very happy to know that the government of Barbados was able to achieve the church majority in both houses so that the President Governor General Sandra Mason was elected in our parliament as the first president for Barbados. The president will now remove the queen of the state of Barbados. So our movement, the Caribbean movement, peace and integration is very happy that the government was able to achieve this objective. We see this as the beginning of Barbados becoming a republic, which would be a parliamentary republic because the president was elected by both houses of our parliament. And you know that that is just the beginning of a process for a people's democratic republic. So it's the beginning of our process. 
but our movement will continue to struggle for Barbados to develop the process for constitutional reforms so as to empower the people and for us to take the Republican process to a higher level where we will be able to have a people's democratic... But, uh, why now? In the midst of a pandemic, Barbados decides to become an independent republic. Well, it was, this was on the drawing board for a very long time. Um, in 1998, the people of Barbados voted for a republic. Um, and there was a constitution um, commission that work on helping to create the conditions for that in 1999. And now the new government, the Miamoli government, uh, won the election with a majority that gives them the legal and political authority to lead Barbados into a republic. Um, and we were very happy that the opposition that is in Parliament also supported the government position. By the way, David, during his speech today, Prime Minister Miamatli said that all Barbadians should be very proud to have uh, Ms. Henry Mason as the nominee for the presidency, the first president as the nation becomes a republic. What qualities are of the current Governor General or former Governor General, like uh, sites like Wikipedia have uh, just said, of this island uh, should be highlighted? Well, we, as, as I mentioned, you know, um, we are doing it the Barbadian way. Um, the removal of the Queen of Head of State of Barbados is a, 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 a process that is very important for the Barbadian people. You know, um, we have be, been celebrating our independence in 1966. So this is the time for us and this is the time for the people of Barbados to, to, to remove the Queen of Head of State and for us to celebrate with a Barbadian person as the Head of State of Barbados. And I am very happy with the transition from the Governor General um, to President with the same person. Um, because I think that that in itself will create the conditions for a lot more unity um, among the Barbadian people, political organizations, and the social movements in Barbados. David, how this might affect not only the geopolitics of the Caribbean, but also future relations between imperial states and their overseas dependencies? Well, the, if you look at the history of republics in the Caribbean, um, you have Guyana, the Cooperative Republic, and you have the Republic of Trinidad, and you have the Commonwealth Republic in Dominica, they're the three English-speaking republics in the region that Barbados will be joining. And it, and it never really changed, you know, our relationships with Europe. It never changed our relationship with England. All three countries are still part of the Commonwealth. And I expect that Barbados will remain part of the Commonwealth. So I don't think it will create any... Um, difficulty in terms of dealing with those imperialist countries in the future. Um, but what we as progressive forces in Barbados, as I mentioned earlier, what we need to do is to continue the struggle because this is just a parliamentary republic that is taking place in Barbados, but we have to work towards the people's democratic republic. I think that that is going to be when the real struggle comes is going to be for us to be able to transform our society and to empower the people of Barbados and to give them the type of hope and to create the type of direction for our nation state to become a truly, truly people's democratic republic constituents.
And then Barbados, uh, UK bilateral relations. Uh, David, does Barbados become a republic mean that the island will break up relations uh, with the United Kingdom? What will the link between London and Bridgeton be like uh, from that moment on? Well, okay. It will be similar to what Trinidad and Dominica and Guyana have in relation to relationship with Britain. Um, they know they don't want to see any major shift in terms of Barbados foreign policy um, as it relates to Barbados becoming a republic. I think I think the um, the country will maintain that kind of foreign policy and, and direction related to Britain and North America and other European states. Um, but I think that what will happen is that our people um, will, will be able to say that we you know, are fully governing ourselves and that we have a nation that is no longer tied to Her Majesty the Queen as our head of state. And, I, and if you look back at the past, you know, we removed the statue from our national heroes create that represents slavery. So to me, there are changes that are taking place in Barbados for, for us to move our nation state forward. But at the same time, um, the Prime Minister made the same statement today that, that Barbados will remain friends of all and satellites of them. And I expect that to continue to happen with Barbados becoming a republic. I think we will also be able to demand, you know, a higher level of respect from European nations and North American nations as a nation state with a Barbadian as our head of state. For this time, thank you. Okay, thank you also. David Denny on Telesur. Okay, we have more stories coming up after this financial break. Welcome back. Russia hosted talks on Afghanistan on Wednesday involving senior representatives of the Taliban and other officials from 10 countries, including China and Pakistan. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov opened the talks and emphasized that forming a really inclusive government are fully reflecting the interests of not only all ethnic groups, but all political forces is necessary to achieve a stable peace in Afghanistan. The talks are marked one of the Taliban's most significant international meetings since it assumed control of Kabul in mid-August. Representatives of India, Iran, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan also attended. The Taliban delegation was headed by Deputy Prime Minister Abdul Zalam Hanafi, a senior figure who led talks with the European Union and the United States last week. Those who followed talks in Ankara between the Taliban and Turkish officials. The current situation in the country cannot yet be called stable. There are numerous terrorist groups trying to take advantage of it. First of all, the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda, which are again trying to raise their heads, carrying out daring bloody attacks in various parts of the country. We are convinced that the time has come to mobilize the resources of the world community to provide effective financial and economic humanitarian assistance to Kabul in order to prevent a humanitarian crisis and curb migration flows. Deputy Prime Minister of Afghanistan's Taliban cabinet, Abdul Salam Hanafi, highlighted the importance of a meeting held in Moscow for the stability of the entire region. He also insisted that the Taliban's government is inclusive. Uh, government is in Afghanistan now also inclusive. Yeah, uh, you know uh, about uh, 500,000 uh, uh, employers working with us. All of them, uh, former, uh, former. Uh, uh, in we don't need the formal military aid. Uh, we need uh, supporting uh, peace in Afghanistan. We need uh, reconstruction in the rehabilitation of Afghanistan. 
two bombs attached to a bus carrying Syrian troops exploded in Damascus on Wednesday. Fourteen people were killed in the attack, one of the deadliest in the capital in years. The explosion, which also left several wounded, happened at a busy intersection near a main bus transfer point where commuters and school children typically converge. No one immediately claimed the responsibility for the attack, but several insurgent and terrorist groups that seek to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad are active in Syria. The bomb had been planted on the bus and was detonated as it passed near the Hafiz al-Assad bridge, close to the National Museum in Damascus. The attack is the deadliest in the Syrian capital since a bomb claimed by ISIS targeted the justice policy in March 2017, killing at least 30 people. I heard a loud explosion near me. At first, I didn't know what was the source, but when I took a closer look, I saw that a bus carrying soldiers was targeted. It has been a long time since something similar happened. I hope this explosion will be the last. I was sleeping when I heard a strong explosion. I woke up and saw a bus on fire, which then stopped after hitting the sidewalk. I later heard the sound of a second explosion, but this one was not as strong as the first one. A grenade was thrown at a Taliban vehicle in the capital of Afghanistan on Wednesday, wounding two fighters and four nearby school children. According to an eyewitness, an explosion happened during the rush hour in the De Manzan district in the west of the capital. Taliban Interior Ministry spokesman Kwari Zayed Akosti said a probe has been launched to find the perpetrators. No side has claimed responsibility for the attack so far. The Taliban, which may restore insecurity to the country, a priority after 20 years of war, is facing a wave of attacks launched by ISIS since it came uh, to power on August 15. In the past weeks, ISIS-K has targeted the Taliban and civilians in mosque bombings in Afghan cities. In the future, the military launched a new airstrike on the Tigrayan capital, Michele, on Wednesday, second bombardment this week against the Tigray People's Liberation Front targets in the city. The raids marked a sharp escalation in the near year long conflict in northern Ethiopia, putting government forces and their allies against the two great peoples of Liberation Front. The first raid occurred on Monday morning on the outskirts of Michele near a cement factory. Second took place at the same day in the city center near the Planet Hotel. Often used by top officials from the Liberation Front, the target of a government military operation since November 2020. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres expressed concern about the escalation of the conflict and called for all sides to avoid targeting civilians and to stop fighting. We've come to the end of this new brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at Tell Us Our English. You can also follow us on social media for all the latest news. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Tell Us Our English, I am Ray Gomez. Thank you for watching.